Dear students, welcome to KPS Bio Tutorials. In the previous class of biochemistry, we have been discussing about the oxidative phosphorylation, in which we described the structure and function of the electron transport system or the respiratory chain, where we discussed that the electrons from the NADH and FADH2 travel along a series of electron transporter molecules and they are complexed into four complexes complex 1 2 3 and 4 and finally the electrons will reach the final electron acceptor or oxygen then oxygen thereby attract H plus ions and to form the water molecule and as a result of this electron flow through these electro these electron carriers molecules many H plus ions are pumped into the perimitochondrial space from the mitochondrial matrix when a pair of electrons from NADH is get traveled to the oxygen thereby 10 H plus ions are pumped into perimitochondrial space if it is traveling from the FADH2, then only 6 H plus ions are pumped into perimitochondrial space. And in today's class, we would like to discuss that how the ATP is synthesized using this electron transport system and which is explained by a model namely chemiosmotic model. So today we would like to talk about ATP synthesis and chemiosmotic model. Once again, welcome back to today's topic that is ATP synthesis and chemiosmotic model. Chemiosmotic model is a model proposed by Peter Mitchell in 1961 in order to explain how the ATP is synthesized using the electrochemical energy inherent in the proton concentration gradient created across the inner mitochondrial membrane due to the electron transport. According to this model, the electrochemical energy inherent in proton concentration gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane that is called the proton motive force or PMF which drive this PMF drive the synthesis of ATP as protons flow passively back into mitochondrial matrix through a proton pore associated with ATP synthase enzyme or oxisomes or F1 F0 particle or the complex 5. Here in electron transport system, when a pair of electrons start its travel from NADH through the complex 1, then to complex 3, then to complex 4 and finally into oxygen. In complex 1, 4 H plus ions are pumped from mitochondrial matrix into the perimitochondrial space and from complex 3 4 H plus ions per pair of electrons are pumped into perimitochondrial space from complex 4 also 2 H plus ions per pair of electrons are pumped into perimitochondrial space from mitochondrial matrix so when a pair of electron start its travel from NADH through the complex 1 then to complex 3 then to complex 4 and finally to oxygen a total of 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 that is total of 10 H plus ions are pumped into perimitochondrial space when a pair of electron get transported from NADH into the complex 4 apart from that per pair of electrons one water molecule also formed the H plus ions required for the formation of water molecules are taken from the mitochondrial matrix 
So as a result, the net result of this electron transport is many H plus ions, more than 10 H plus ions are get pumped into perimitochondrial space from the mitochondrial matrix. If the travel of a pair of electrons is starting from the succinate, from the succinate, the two electrons transferred into a FAD, then that is the part of the complex 3. Then from complex, sorry, complex 2, from the complex 2, then the electron move to the complex 3, then to 4. If the travel of pair of electrons are starting from the complex 2, then from the complex 2, there is no H plus is pumped. But in complex 3, 4 H plus is pumped per pair of electrons. From, from complex 4 also 2 H plus ions are pumped per electrons. Thereby 6 electrons are pumped into perimitochondrial space as the 2 electrons travel start its travel from the complex 2 to the complex 4. That means if the FADH2 is the electrode, uh, FADH2 is the source of electron, then 6 H plus ions are pumped into perimetochondrial space, and also a pair of electron, uh, a pair of H plus ions are utilized for the formation of water molecules. In both in both these cases the H plus ions are get pumped into perimitochondrial space thereby the concentration of H plus ions are get increased in the perimitochondrial space and this, its concentration is getting reduced in the mitochondrial matrix thereby here in this side in this side that means in the side of perimitochondrial space the H plus ion concentration will be high and in the mitochondrial matrix its concentration will be low so as the electron transport continues the concentration difference is increasing between these two sides of the inner mitochondrial membrane thereby a concentration gradient a electrochemical gradient is created between these two sides of the inner mitochondrial membrane so a potential difference is created that is called the proton motive force or PMF. This proton motive force is equivalent to uh, its, its volt is, is for 0 0.14 volt that is the voltage of this uh, electro proton motive force PMF which is equivalent to 5.2 kilocalorie per mole. This energy is utilized by the ATP synthase enzyme or oxisomes or F1, F0 particle or complex 5. All these are representing the same ATP synthase enzyme which utilize this proton motive force for the synthesis of ATP. This is what is explained by the Peter Mitchell model of chemiosmotic model. So this synthesis of ATP by the chemiosmotic model is equivalent to or it is very similar with the process of happening in the hydroelectric power plants. In hydroelectric power plant you know there will be a dam is created and at the one side of the dam there will be the water is stored then the water is taken to outside through penstock pipes and it is pumped through the generator so as the water flows the generate the turbine rotate and the generator generate the, uh, the electricity in that so in this manner here the inner mitochondrial membrane is representing the dam and the perimitochondrial space is the water reservoir And the generator represents the oxisomes. So the process is very similar with the power generation in the 
hydroelectric power plants. Now look at, look at the structure of F1, F0 particle. As the name indicates, the, uh, this particle consists of two components, an F1 component and F0 components. The F1 component is said to be the F1 because it is the first factor recognized as the essential for oxidative phosphorylation. So as it is the first recognized component, thereby it is called a F1. It is a knob-like head po portion with a stalk. Here in the, this picture you can see, this is this part comprises the F1 part, a knob-like bulged structure with many subunits. Then F0 particle, it is also said to be oligomycin sensitive component. Here oligomycin, the F0 is also called FO because O represents the oligomycin. So this oligomycin sensitive component or the F0 particle form a base piece of the ATP synthesis. Here in the inner mitochondrial membrane, in the inner mitochondrial membrane, there is the F0 particle is embedded and this F0 particle it is a rotor like structure the cylindrical shape which is connected with the F1 particle through a stalk and the F1 has 9 subunits 3 alpha subunits 3 beta 1 gamma 1 delta and one epsilon totally nine subunits are there for the f1 particle here you can see the alpha beta then gamma epsilon delta the alpha and beta are alternately arranged in the knob of the f1 like the like a petals like the petals of the orange here you can see the in the green that is the alpha subunits here one alpha subunits then after that there is one beta then again one alpha then again one beta in that manner the three alpha and three beta subunits are alternately arranged like the petals of an orange the gamma and epsilon form a stock of f1 here there is gamma subunit and epsilon subunit they connect the f1 particle with the f0 particle so they act as an stock to the f1 particle the f0 particle it is the hydrophobic and consists of a ring comprising 10 to 14 c subunits here this cylindrical structure is called the f0 particle which is formed of 10 to 14 C subunits. This is said to be C subunit because it is a, a look like a half ring, half ring look like C, thereby it is called C subunits. Such 10 to 14 C subunits are joined to form a cylindrical structure that is called F0 particle and it is hydrophobic because it is get embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And there is a single A subunit which keep to outside of this ring. There is a A subunit. This is the A subunit which is lying outside to the uh, F0 particle like the mudguard of the tire. Then F1 and F0 are connected by two ways one through a central gamma and epsilon stock here there is gamma subunit and epsilon subunit they together form a stock so they connect these F1 and F0 particles through its their centers through their centers they are connected by the stock then exteriorly they are connected by uh, by a structure which is formed of a delta subunit 
then there is two B subunits and which is connected to the A subunit. So these structures together form an exterior connection between the F0 and F1 particles. So here the exterior column formed of an A subunit then two B subunits then there is one delta subunits. So this is the structure of F1 and F0 particle. The diameter of the F knob or the F F1 particle is 85 Armstrong and the F1 particle is facing towards the mitochondrial matrix and the F0 particle is facing towards the perimetochondrial space or it is fitted on the inner mitochondrial membrane. On the A subunits, you can see two half channels. It is said to be two half, cha half channels because they are reaching only up, uh, up to the middle of the inner mitochondrial membrane, that which is called half channel. It is not piercing the entire width of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Here there is one half channel. It is open to the mitochondrial, perimetochondrial space and the other end is opening at the middle of the inner mitochondrial membrane. There is another half channel which is start from the inner mitochondrial, from the middle of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Then it opens out into the mitochondrial matrix. So there are two such half channels in the A subunits. Then how the ATP is synthesized by the ATP synthase enzyme complex? This is explained by a mechanism namely binding change mechanism. This is proposed by the scientist namely Paul Baer. According to this model of ATP synthesis, the catalytic center for the ATP synthesis is located at the beta subunit of F1 particle. The beta subunit is the actual site of the ATP synthesis. You know in the F1 particle there are three such beta subunits. They are alternately placed between alpha subunits. The three different beta subunits are existing in different conformations. All the three beta subunits are not alike. They are differing in their conformations. There are three, they are existing in three different conformations. They are called beta L, beta T and beta O. Beta L, here the L represents the low. That means it has low affinity to ATP and ADP and inorganic phosphate will bind to this site. It has low affinity to ATP but it has affinity towards ADP and inorganic phosphate thereby ADP and inorganic phosphate will bind to the site but the ATP cannot bind at the beta L site. So L represents the low that means it has low affinity to ATP. Then beta T is the other confirmation. T represents the tight, that means it has strong affinity to ATP so that the ADP and inorganic phosphate bound at this site will be converted into ATP. So as the beta T has strong affinity towards ATP, if any ADP and inorganic phosphate is there, it will be automatically converted into ATP. Then beta O represent the, uh, here the O represent the open, that means any bound compounds will be released out of this conformation. This is an open conformation, that means it will, no compounds have affinity towards this conformation. Whatever bound to the B O, beta O will be released from the sub, from the subunit. So this is the structural features of beta subunit here you can see the beta l beta t and beta o 
which is placed in between two beta subunits there will be alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 subunits so these subunits are placed 120 degree apart from each other so all together they form a circle or 360 degree then here what how the ATP is in the cyst taking place here when an ADP here the beta L subunit have low affinity to ATP but the ADP and inorganic phosphate will bind at the beta L subunit and as the you know this beta L subunit is located at the at the F1 particle so as the F1 particle rotates as the F1 particle rotates how it will rotate when the F0 particle rotates first the F0 particle will rotate in anti-clockwise you know the F0 particle is, particle is connected to the F1 particle through a stalk thereby as the F0 particle rotates the F1 particle also rotates as the F0 particle of as the F1 particle rotates the beta subunits also rotate so the beta subunit at this particular position will be in the beta L conformation and beta T at this uh, the beta subunit at this particular position will be in beta T conformation and the beta subunit in this particular position will be beta in the beta O conformation. So once an ADP and inorganic phosphate binds at beta L, then the rotation takes place in anticoquase by a rotation of 120 degree. The position of the beta subunit will be changed from beta L into beta T. Thereby what happens this ADP and inorganic phosphate is converted into ATP because at the beta T conformation the ATP only ATP can bind at the beta T conformation thereby ADP and inorganic phosphate will automatically convert into ATP again the rotation takes place by 120 degree in anti-clockwise direction thereby the beta subunit move to the beta O conformation in beta O conformation it is uh, said to be open conformation thereby the ATP synthesizer from beta T position that ATP is released out of the beta subunit and again this process continues so from this picture itself it is very clear by a rotation of 360 degree three ATP can be synthesized because as one ADP and inorganic phosphate bind here and it rotate by 120 degree degree by this move this beta L become free and another ADP and inorganic phosphate will bind at the beta L conformation again this process continues thereby uh, by a single rotation of the f0 f1 particle three atp can be synthesized then how the rotation of the f0 particles takes place you know by the rotation of f1 particle by binding change mechanism the ATP is synthesized to rotate to for the rotation of F1 particle the F0 particle has to be rotated how the F0 particle is rotated its rotation is caused by the proton flow that means by the movement of protons from perimitochondrial space into mitochondrial matrix through this F0 particle you know F0 particle consists of 10 to 14 C rings 10 
there is 10 C rings in yeast. In the case of yeast, there is only 10 rings. But in other eukaryotes, there is 10 to 14 C rings are there. Here the C subunit lie at the center of inner mitochondrial membrane. <coughs> the hydrophilic amino acids like aspartic acid will be protonated. Here the F0 particle is placed on the inner mitochondrial membrane. You know the inner mitochondrial membrane is formed of the phospholipids and it is a hydrophobic in nature. And thereby, due to this hydrophobic nature, the, um, the hydrophilic amino acids like aspartic acid in the C rings will be in the protonated form. That means in the COOH form. Because it can ionize only in the hydrophilic medium. So, this inner mitochondrial membrane is a hydrophobic nature, is having hydrophobic nature. The aspartic acid or amino acid like, uh, like aspartic, aspartic acid cannot ionize into COO minus. Thereby, it will be existing as COOH form. Then, you know, here there is two half channels as I have mentioned earlier. Through these half channels, the hydrophilic fluids are flowing into the interior of the inner mitochondrial membrane from the perimitochondrial space as well as inner mito mitochondrial matrix. Through this half channel, the electrolytes or the uh, or the water or other liquids will be moving to the inner mitochondrial membrane so this region which is located in the a subunit is hydrophilic in nature from here also from the mitochondrial matrix also the hydrophilic substances are reaching the inner mitochondrial membrane so inside this a subunit it is having a hydrophilic nature so the c subunits facing the a subunit the c subunit facing the a subunit will be communicating with the hydrophilic medium thereby the the amino acids like aspartic acids will be ionized in this a subunit it will be ionized into coo minus 4 here you can see the half channels so the co uh, the aspartic acids facing this region that is inside the a subunit lying in between two half channels will be communicating with the hydrophilic medium there, thereby it is deprotonated or ionized into COO minus so the aspartic acid in the A subunit will be deprotonated or ionized into COO minus form and all other aspartic acids of the C rings will be in the protonated stage or COOH form then what happens when the proton flow occur from the mitochondrial perimitochondrial space into mitochondrial matrix through these half channels you know inside here in the perimitochondrial space there are lot of h plus ions their concentration is high there so it has greater tendency to flow back into the mitochondrial matrix so here the only way for their passage is the these half channels so these h plus ions will rush into these half channels and when it come to the half channel here there will be the aspartic acid in the deprotonated stage i told you the aspartic acid in the serine uh, aspartic acid of the serines facing the a subunit or 
coming here to these half channels will be deprotonated or ionized into COO minus form. So as the H plus ions reaches the uh, reaches the COO minus group of aspartic acid, it is again protonated into COOH by this by these H plus ions. This protonation of the aspartic acid will make some conformational change in the C subunit. As a result of this protonation of aspartic acid, the C subunit changes its conformation and by this change it will make a rotation of about 360 degree to in the anti-clockwise direction. So thereby by protonation the C ring will change its position to move in the anti-clockwise direction. Thereby another C subunit come to this position that is as another C subunit move into A subunit due to this rotation COOH of aspartic acid will be ionized into COO minus. This H plus ion will be transported into mitochondrial matrix through the half channel in contact with the mitochondrial matrix. So as, as the C subunit rotate three, uh, three, uh, 36 degree clockwise, anti-clockwise direction, the next C subunit take that place. So the incoming subunit is having protonated COOH group. So as that COOH group reaches this uh, half channels it will communicate with the hydrophilic medium and it will be deprotonated or ionized. So that H plus ions will be pumped into the mitochondrial matrix. So in this way here the COOH, COO minus ion take up the H plus ion from my perimetrochondrial space and it will move to the move in anti-clockwise direction but another aspartic acid with the COOH group is ionized on reaching this A subunit and it is pumping the H plus ion into mitochondrial matrix through another another half channel which is facing to us mitochondrial matrix. In this way this cycle continues. So by the pumping of one H plus ion from mitochondrial perimetrochondrial space into mitochondrial matrix, three, 36 degree rotation takes place in the C subunits. So by, a, by 10 H plus ion pumping, 360 degree rotation is possible. So to rotate 360 degree of uh, the to rotate the F0 particle by 360 degree minimum 10 H plus ion has to be pumped from perimitochondrial space into mitochondrial matrix through these half channels. We already studied that when one NADH transfer its electrons into electron transport system and it travels through these complexes and reaches the final electron acceptor and as a result 10 H plus ions are pumped into perimetrochondrial space. So when these 10 H plus ions are pumped back into mitochondrial matrix through the F1 F0 particle, a complete rotation of F0 particle is taking place. As a result, a complete rotation of F1 particle also takes place. When a complete rotation of F1 particle is taking place, you know, by binding change mechanism, by a complete rotation of F0, F1 particle or by 360 degree rotation of F1 particle, 3 ATP can be synthesized. That means from one NADH molecule, 3 ATP can be synthesized by the complete oxidation. If it is FADH2, you know, one FADH2, if the electron transport start from FADH2, only 6 H plus ions are pumped into perimetrochondrial space. Thereby, only 
two ATP can be synthesized on average because for the complete rotation of F1 particle, 10 H plus ions are required. But if, if the electron transport starts from FADH2, only 6 H plus ions are pumped into perimeter contour space, thereby a complete rotation is not possible for F1 particle, thereby uh, by an average of 2 ATP can be synthesized from 1 FADH2. So in this way, the ATP is synthesized by the oxidative phosphorylation. Here the electrons from the NADH and FADH2 is transported along the electron transport system. As a result, many H plus ions are pumped into perimetochondrial space from mitochondrial matrix, thereby an electrochemical gradient or proton motive force is created between the two sides of the inner mitochondrial membrane. The energy inherent in this proton motive force is utilized for the synthesis of ATP by a, com by a com complex of enzymes namely ATP synthase or F0 F1 particle or F1 F0 particle. So this is the method of ATP synthesis by oxidative phosphorylation with the help of electron transport system and the oxisomes. I hope all of you understood the topic very well. Thank you for listening.